Now, technology stocks, as Courtney said, helping to lead the markets higher today. But are they a good place for you to be putting your money right now? Well, let's turn to an expert. We have Michael Lippert. He is a portfolio manager for the Barron Opportunity Fund. And he thinks, yes, you should be thinking about technology. His fund has an emphasis on technology and has outperformed 94 percent of its peers in the past year, 76 percent of its competitors in the last five years. Michael, good to have you with us on Bloomberg. Thanks for having me on. Is there a dichotomy right now when it comes to investing in technology? Because it seems as though the big, you know, stalwart stocks such as an Intel, they trade at one multiple. But when you look at things like Salesforce.com, Netflix, which is also technology in one case, the multiples there are just as if they're completely divorced from what's going on inside the business. What's going on? Yeah, I think it's interesting today. You see the large cap tech stocks, HP, Cisco, Dell, Intel, Microsoft, to name a few, are all trading really close to their 52-week lows. And then you have the Salesforce.coms, the Netflixes, price lines, et cetera, are trading at very high valuations. It really comes down to growth and innovation. The, um, the large cap tech stocks are not delivering as much growth. They have cut costs or they're not innovating as much. So investors are looking for growth. They're looking for stocks that are working. And they are finding these oftentimes smaller companies much faster growing. And they're ignoring much more the near-term valuation because they want to be involved in these stocks for the long-term potential that they have. So what do you think investors ought to do? Should they do a little bit of both or should they focus on what you're describing almost as tech value? Well, what we do is we, we do try to do a little bit of both. I mean, we're focused on companies Companies that are really innovating. What we're trying to figure out is how big can these companies be in three to five years? So not so much with the valuation is today. Um, and then we try and pay a reasonable amount for what we think the future earnings or cash flow potential of businesses will be. Um, so I think there's no slowdown in innovation. In our country, innovation equals growth. You can't have long-term growth without innovation. Um, and there are lots and lots of companies that are innovating in very interesting ways. And we're trying to find those businesses and buy them at good value so that we could achieve a double in the stock price for our investors in a four or five year time period. How do you then participate in a theme such as cloud computing, this idea that the big computing resources are going to reside somewhere in a third party site and you're going to be able to access programs access services through your computer, but you're not going to have to pay the big money in order to maintain those systems yourself. Well, there are a number of ways that we participate. We participate in the application providers, the so-called software service providers. We have investments in some of the providers of the infrastructure or the data centers. Like an Equinix, like an for Equinix, example? which I've talked about on your show before. We have an investment in a company called Riverbed, which is involved in what's called WAN optimization, but it's essentially making the network act faster. The network is limited by the speed of light. And if you don't have to go back and forth as many times, you can reduce those round trips. You can make the application seem like it's working faster and seem like it's, you know, the old days when the application is much closer to the end user as opposed to an application that's sitting in a data center potentially hundreds of miles away. So those are a few areas that we've participated in cloud computing. Do you think that the technology sector is going to get a boost because enterprises, big businesses, are going to be spending more money on technology as we come out of this recession? Well, I mean, I think over the long term, the answer is definitely yes. Um, you can't be in business today without employing and deploying technology. Um, I think coming out of the downturn, lots of businesses has, have underinvested, so they need to invest now. If you look, for example, at Microsoft's results, and you know, initially was driven by a consumer spending boom in PCs, but now it's really moved back towards enterprises. And the level of spending over the short term is really going to be dependent upon the economy and what the customers of those businesses are ultimately doing. But over the long term, I think yes. You, you can't be in business, you know, in the second decade of this century without having significant investments in technology. I want to start you off talking about something called uh, the, the world of business uh, management, pro business process management. Just define what it is. We'll talk about the company coming up, but what is business process business management? Business process management is essentially automating what's a manual business process. So BPM is the acronym used. To me, it's really business process automation. So think of something you do manually if you can use software and technology to automate that. So a computer's doing it instead of a human being doing it. So it might be things like what, dealing with uh, accounts receivable or uh, filing invoices. In other words, just trying to keep the business running on it a day-to-day -day basis. 
be all of those things. It could be, and examples are warranty processing, um, quoting for insurance, opening a new account at a bank. All of these things can be are processes that can be done by hand, or they can be done much more efficiently if they're automated. All right, Michael, we were talking about business process management, this idea that if you can figure out some kind of manual service that or some kind of manual process that a business is currently doing, automate it, that's going to make things more efficient. One of the companies I know you focus on to deal with this aspect of change is Pegasystems. Tell me about Pegasystems. Um, what really differentiates Pegasystems from other BPM providers is that they have software that enables the business user to actually design the application. So they don't give you finished software, they give you a platform that allows you to automate the business process, and it's very graphical. It's like you know developing a bunch of flowcharts. Um, so and it's I almost like a drop and drag drop kind and of drag. thing where you can put together your own process. Exactly. You and I could do it sitting here today. So it's it's, it's really that simple. And um, the difference is you don't have to go to IT, which takes a long, long time. It takes lots of money, and this software is much more flexible for the business users. Can design it if they need to make a change. They can do that very quickly, and the software, the platform, actually writes the code. You don't have to write the code. The software does it for you. So you don't have to invest in having software engineers on staff. Correct. So what about the future for the stock? I mean, is this something that is going to produce profits because it's going to be taken over? I mean, I can see how this would be part of a portfolio of software well, applications. I think there's no doubt that that's a potential, but that's certainly not what the management of that company is looking at today. They're looking at a, a, a gigantic growth opportunity. So their, their big markets are financial services, healthcare, insurance. Think of the enormous regulatory changes we've just experienced there. So, so many processes need to be changed and manual processes need to be automated. So we're just on the cusp of these changes. Um, their business is growing very, very fast. They have significant demand, which they can't even fulfill. They've um, been growing their sales force by about 50%. And what's given you an opportunity to invest in the stock today at a pretty low valuation, under 20 times, is that they're, they've give, they gave full year guidance to Wall Street and their 2Q numbers came in a little bit lower than what Wall Street analysts were thinking of for 2Q, even though the company is still confident in their full year numbers. And there's just lumpiness in software sales. So you get to invest in a company that is a great long-term um, opportunity ahead of it at a pretty low valuation, under 20 times. And well, and did you, you mentioned this whole idea of the areas in which it's involved. I think there was a report about how they have been able to tailor the software so that banks that are dealing with new underwriting regulations having to do with mortgages are able to basically make those changes on the fly using the software. That's right, because they, the business people can write their own software. Whenever there's a change in the law, they can change the rules in their own programs, and they can do it on the fly. And they could make a change, and if it's not exactly right, they can continually tweak it because you don't have to go back to IT and have a several month development cycle. You can do it very, very quickly and very efficiently, and that's what differentiates them. Now, another company I know you've been looking at that has to do with efficiency and trying to do things quickly is all scripts, and this has to do with medical records auto, uh, automation, as well as trying to figure out ways to deal with all the paperwork that hospitals have to deal with. Correct. So they're an electronic medical records software provider. Um, in our country, there's significant medical waste. About 30% of the cost of health care in the United States is medical waste. There's also all significant medical errors um, and patient care that is not as good as it could be. And all of these things could be improved with electronic medical record technology. Now, the government knows that. They want to get on top of cost. So as part of the Stimulus Act, they are giving 36 plus billion dollars incentives, which will be spent over the next three years, for the adoption of this technology. And they do it through Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement. So we have this gigantic way of spending coming, and Allscripts is one of the companies really well positioned to take advantage of that. All right, so trying to take advantage of spending by the government having to do with health care. All right, Hall scripts, all scripts, you like that. You also like, as you said, Pegasystems. Now let me turn your focus to a company that, when I looked at this was something you were focused on, I thought, is this the same fund? Because Carbo Ceramics, this is technology to help oil and natural gas companies get the most for digging for energy. That's true. As I said before, my fund is focused 
focused on innovation, oftentimes technological innovation, but it's not in classic technology, which is IT. It's all across the economy. So this is a company that is involved in significant developments that have occurred in oil and gas exploration, most of it domestic. So we have significant deposits of natural gas and oil in shale deposits in our country. Previously, we knew they were there, but we couldn't reach them. So the drillers have developed technology where they don't only go vertically, but they turn that drill bit and they can go horizontally. So then they um, fracture the rock, which allows the oil and gas to flow out. Now, when you fracture the rock, if you don't maintain those openings and they collapse, then the oil and gas can't get out. So they've developed a material which they call propping, simply for propping it open, which goes in there and creates a uniform flow path to allow the oil and gas to come out efficiently. So what this company does that's a significant innovation is that the old form of propping was simply sand. Imagine a tube and you put sand in there and you try to pour water through that tube because every particle of sand is a different size, the water's not going to flow through smoothly. Now imagine you have a tube and you fill it with, let's say, BBs. Every BB is uniform size, so it allows a uniform flow path. It allows the oil and gas to flow out much more efficiently, much more quickly, and so that the producers could get a lot more throughput out of their wells. And so it really it lowers their costs and ultimately increases the productivity of the wells. All right, and this kind of innovation is something that that's what you really want to see in the companies and that three to five year time horizon. So look into the future. A that's bit. what we're focusing on, exactly. All right, I want to thank you very very much, uh, Michael Lippert, coming to us of Barron Opportunity Fund, shedding some light on uh, Carbo Ceramics as well as Pega Systems and Allscripts. Appreciate your insight into innovation. We'll just call it innovation Thank just you. as well as technology. Okay.